Hello and welcome to another pen video from Penultimate Dave. So today I wanted to show you uh, some some Visconti's here, um, and uh, these are from a range called the uh, Visconti Millennium Arc, but uh, they're called the Moonlight Edition. Now, there were several series of the Millennium Arcs made, uh, namely the Millennium Arc One, Two, and Three. The first two were, if I'm not mistaken, made around the early 2000s. And the latter set of Millennium Arcs, which are these here today, uh, were made around about sort of 2015 um, and released into like 2016. So I have three uh, Visconti Millennium Arcs in my collection today. And, and these are, um, this is the green version. And I'll zoom in a little here so you can just see what this really looks like. It's a, a marvellous uh, green swirl that, that's going on there in the body. Uh, and then we have the burgundy version, which again is um, it's a little bit more subtle, I guess. But you can still see some of the swirls going on there. And then we have uh, what's called the typhoon blue, and you can just see the, the typhoon swirls going on there. Quite remarkable. So these are the, the new batches of uh, Millennium Arcs. The, the older batches came with uh, 18 karat gold nibs. And if I unscrew this, I'll show you. These come with a um, CR18 nib. And the CR18, or, or basically Chromium 18, is, is basically a uh, wraparound nib. It, it's a steel nib. So you can see the wrap around there. Uh, so, so these nibs um, are a little bit hard. Um, chromium being steel, you're really not going to see a lot of flexibility in these nibs. They're going to be a little bit like nails. Uh, if you've ever tried a steel nib, you'll find that most steel nibs don't have a lot of flex, uh, unless they, they've actually been designed to have flex. So, so the, these really will not be bouncy, but uh, um, the, the benefit of these models uh, that, that were released in 2015, 2016, is that they, they come at a slightly cheaper price. Now the other thing that, that you'll, you'll notice here is uh, they have a um, it, uh, like a vintage filling system and uh, it's, it's called a uh, crescent filler and um, like you, you'll see these on some of the older vintage pens but you also see them on um, uh, like Conklin. Conklin's uh, have their own crescent fillers and they, they actually have a trademark so Visconti couldn't use the trademark so they decided to call this the, the um, arc uh, filling system instead and basically what you do here is you rotate this ring and you'll see that there here is just a slight sort of uh, empty part on that ring and then if you rotate it around here you can then depress the ring here and and that's basically how you fill the pen up you depress it you let go and it sucks in ink and then you just rotate this back round again to, to lock this in place so you cannot depress it and that, that's really the filling system. That's how simple the, the filling system is. Um, in terms of cleaning, though, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to clean, a little bit like a, uh, a piston filler or a power vac filler. Basically, you just have to like keep on depressing this, sucking up uh, clean water, expelling the clean water or the, the inky water, and, and just basically repeating and, until the the water that you get coming out of of the pen is is running clear or as clear as possible so like vintage pens th these actually have a sack inside them um, but unlike vintage pens uh, th they are not using a latex sack or a rubber sack they're, they're using a silicon sack and the reason why Visconti decided to use a silicon sack is that it has about a hundred year lifespan um, so so that, that should actually mean that the sack should not fail. Uh, 
I have heard stories that the the first batch uh, did have some issues. Uh, Visconti very quickly fixed those and I believe recalled those models. So I don't believe there are any out there that are affected. There might be a few though. Um, but uh, th these three pens I have not had any problems with at the moment with their sacks. They fill, they do not leak uh, and, and they're actually pretty good writers. Obviously the nibs are going to be a little bit sort of uh, more of a sort of a nail to write with, uh, but they're very smooth and very juicy wet. The, the one of the problems though I will show you with with these with these is that they do uh, like a lot of pens that they have multiple threads here on on the uh, pen. So if I, I I have the the crescent filler here or the the arc filler lined up with the uh, cap here with, with the clip. And if I screw this on, you'll see that they don't match up. So if 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 you are really sort of wanting to get these to match up, you just have to be a little bit clued up at how to do this. And what I do here is I line them up, and then I literally just do one click, two click, and then screw it back up. And it works every single time. And I'll show you that again. One click, two click. And there you go. So that's just something you have to remember when when uh, working with these these pens. If you want to get those lined up, then then that's just something that you have to do. Uh, it would have been nice if if there was just one thread to match up, which would mean no matter how you screwed the the the, the cap onto the body, it would always line up. Um, but then you have to. Uh, sort of have longer threads and, and it will take longer to actually try and screw the cap onto the pen. So uh, so there are downsides and, and upsides really uh, to to having shorter or longer threads or multiple threads. But uh, I just thought I would show you that just so that you're aware of that. So in terms of the pens, I'll show you the burgundy a little bit more here and, and as you can see the chatoyance there on, on the cap is, is quite nice so you just see how the light picks up on that and it's almost like it has got some like black typhoon swirls in the cap even though this isn't the typhoon model and in the body there you can just see how the the, the light reflects off of those swirls it's not quite as much as the green model though, with the burgundy model. And then with the blue Typhoon, you can see this so much better. You can see just how those light blue swirls go in with the, the darker blue and the black swirls. And look at that, that's just a, a lovely set of swirls there. And you can go down to the body. You don't get as many swirls, but uh, or at least on this pen anyway. But uh, you can see the swirls there just coming in, and just around the 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 uh, finial there on on the body. So, and again, all of these have the uh, CR18 nib, and it, it's uh, basically called Visconti called it the Smart Touch nib. But you also notice here as well, if I can just zoom in a little bit more, you'll see that the tipping on this. It is actually, try and focus a little bit more, there you go. You can just see that the, the tipping actually goes up. So it's almost like a Waverly nib, but not quite. Like a Waverly nib will have the, the uh, tip of the nib uh, pointing upwards more. Um, but this is like the tipping is actually more on the top of the nib rather than underneath the nib. But uh, it writes very smoothly. Um, and very wet as well so it's just something just to bear in mind now the, the the other thing to bear in mind as well is that each of these pens are a limited edition one so so this one is a limited edition on the typhoon blue of 150 now if I have a look at the the burgundy version you'll notice that it's a limited edition one of 200 instead of 150 so there are varying ranges of limited edition ones here and then the green see this one again is is 200 so uh that again that's just something to bear in mind 
to be honest. Uh, oh, I didn't screw this one on too well. So just just something just to bear in mind. So what I'll do here, I'll I'll show you the weight uh, of the, uh, the 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 pens. So with the cap, you're looking at just under thirty-two. So that's that's capped. The cap on its own, looking just under fifteen grams. So that's going to make the body just over fifteen. So. 17, almost 17 and a half grams. And I'll just check the others as well. 31 grams, just under 32. Just under 15 grams there. And you might get a little bit of variation sometimes between pens. And, and the clips that they've used. So you get 14.67, 32 grams, and then we'll. There you go. 17, 17 and a half grams. So a slight difference there, but not a lot. It's within tolerance levels, I would say. If we have a look at the the length as well, the the length capped is 144.2 millimeters, uncapped it's 125.6 millimeters, posted it's 172.5 millimeters. So that's quite a quite a length actually, and the section diameter is uh, just around 10 and a half millimeters. So so these pens here are cost. Uh, they retail around about three hundred dollars new U.S. dollars. Um, you can still find some of these available as a new old stock from some retailers, um, but if you look uh, around, you, sometimes you can get them at a bit of a discount between two hundred and two hundred and fifty dollars if you look hard enough. Uh, generally, though, they're really nice pens. But even at the two hundred to two hundred and fifty dollar range, a lot of people do tend to bulk at buying these because because they're essentially a steel nib, and that's a lot to pay for a steel nib. So it really depends on on whether or not you like steel nibs, uh, hard nibs. Um, but as I said, these nibs write really well. Uh, they're very juicy wet. So. Uh, personally, I don't have any problems with them, and I was able to pick these up and add them to my collection at a significant discount. The filling system is a bit of a quirky one, though, with the old Vinci-style days of bladders or uh, and, and lever filling mechanisms. So uh, it's just one of those things, really, just that you, you, you have to think about. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to try and clean these pens. Um, but uh, but I, I I do think it's worth it. Like when when you look at sort of the chatoyance and and the especially on this green pen, it's just it. I, I do really like this, so I I think it's worth it to be honest. And uh, I do write with these quite a lot as well. So uh, for me, it's definitely worth it. Um, but obviously, uh, each pen and each price range is really down to you at the end of the day. So there you have it. I just wanted to show you the, the, the Millennium Arcs. And uh, please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.